Hello Masoka Universe. Well, let's do this. Back in the dark majority and this time I have the time to let's talk about what has been happening in COVID land, coronavirus land and what are the implications on the national leagues and when can we expect leagues to restart if they're restarting. Um, first Let's talk about uh, the situation here in Austria for a simple reason that today we had a press conference that actually gives you all the implications I think for everywhere. Where, uh, but I watched this so I can take this directly. They said well um, we allow from 1st of May on Austria actually is the first country in Europe that is actually loosening uh, the restrictions a little bit more. Stores can open. Uh, still people should largely stay at home but at least some little normalcy is coming back as long as distance and so on is good and you know most Austrians are actually taking this seriously enough so um, that's a positive thing. Now um, they opened up for all the individual sports even tennis uh, that you can play this again and then they said for contact sports or team sports they cannot allow this but they make an exception for soccer and the exceptions are as follows and they kind of took what uh, is allowed in Germany. First of all, any training has to be in small groups of maximum five, in extreme cases six players. Always these have to train together. Of course, before training starts, all of them have to be tested. Um, match days behind closed doors are possible and we'll talk about in Germany they say around 239, uh, 240 I think they said 239 but 240 people are allowed in the stadium but that includes players, coach, uh, journalists, uh, TV stations, all that so uh, it's pretty strictly limb limited ref uh, reference so no spectators at all. They say this is okay uh, again, given that except for the players and the coaching staff who will be tested uh, at least 48 hours before each game, preferably 24 hours, but you know it depends on how the testing, uh, how long it takes. Uh, and then after testing they have to be just among themselves. If that is given then uh, they can play behind closed doors. However, and I think this is the biggest caveat that I think in Germany less a problem than so than in Austria, um, the league has to organize all the testing. And given the tests are not that easy to come by and not that cheap and that you have to kind of work with a lab and this has to be kind of centralized, might be tricky to do that. Uh, I think this is the biggest stepping uh, stumbling block in a way and I know that the LASK president who is also part of the Austrian Football Federation uh, group uh, deciding what's gonna happen uh, said that for him playing soccer is not a priority Yes, we are in first place, so actually he would profit, but he never mentioned that actually he, he, he said as long as playgrounds are closed, which they are at the moment, as long the tests are needed for other people, uh, having the audacity to say that soccer players should, should be tested is a pretty steep one. And I have to say I kind of agree with him on that. If tests were more widely available, I think I would say let's go ahead with uh, games behind closed doors and finish up the leagues. I don't deny, and I talked about this repeatedly, that in Austria the situation is such that um, each team played each team already once. I think you would have a fair, uh, it would be not out of um, the blue to say Lask is champion. Uh, relegation, I think, it needs to be resolved by giving the next two. Uh, move up and uh, you know expand the league expand the league a little bit uh, since the second league is 16 the upper league is 12 you could make two 14 leagues and actually that would also allow you to tighten up the next season a little bit which also allows preparation for the Euro 2021 although it's still Euro 2020 so uh, that's the situation in Austria and in Germany they already went ahead with that um, 
training can start at the 1st of May. So by mid-May the Austrian league could kick off and the same thing is true for the Bundesliga. The Bundesliga is definitely eyeing to play behind closed doors starting as, as we said around the beginning of May and this is due to the fact that in Germany and in Austria the situation is not as dire. Um, now one a uh, big concern, of course, was the cup final in Austria because there's a second league in there. The second league is kind of ha still hanging the balance. All the amateur leagues have been cancelled. There will be no champions, no relegated teams whatsoever. Uh, the second league potentially will start up as well or not. This has to be seen. However, they said that the um, cup final, which is the only thing left, will be the first competitive game, which makes sense so that the second league team from Lustenau can prepare. Uh, I think in Germany we are not as far ahead. I think there are still quarterfinals or semifinals to be played. So um, and But they are all Bundes... Are they all Bundes? No, I think there's are Saarbrücken in there, something like that. So yeah, I um, have to see. But in Germany the structure is a little bit more safe because there are many more teams. There are, uh, all, there are all three professional leagues, uh, at least two two fully professional leagues and one semi-professional with the third league. So I think um, Germany has a better grip on that problem, I would assume. Now, it all in Austria the decision has been made. In Germany it still needs the approval of the government whether they allow something like that to happen, but they're already training in small groups uh, to kind of get ahead and then yeah it will be uh games will be played behind closed doors now what does this mean for fans that is i think that meanwhile everyone is smart enough to stay home they can fulfill the tv contracts and so on so i actually think germany probably is gonna happen um i think there's enough will enough money enough power behind it but we have to see how it goes I'm a little bit uh, more skeptical um, about the plans in the uh, Premier League where they want to play, as I said, Wembley and I think St. George's Park is it called, in Burton where the whole FA uh, uh, center is. They would host all the teams. They probably have the capacity and play their remaining games there. Ah, I have to. In Germany, there are nine rounds left to play. Um, so by the end of July, uh, end of August, and this will be important, they probably will be able to do that uh, this way, especially if they start mid May. Uh, they probably don't need to even do a very tight program uh, to achieve that. So uh, that's. Definitely plus for Germany. So in England, they're still saying, yeah, I have them all together. I just, I'm not sure how reasonable that plan is. Uh, yes, you could make it in very compact format. You could do it almost like a Euro tournament. Uh, it would be great uh, drama on the other side. I mean, Liverpool will very soon be champions and then it's all about relegation and so on. And... In a way, Liverpool could say, yeah, we're done, we are, we are champions, we drop out of the championship, why do we need to play still? Just saying that. Um, but it might it might work. A very quick add-on to the Premier League is that there have been meetings uh, discussing whether we shouldn't finish the season by June 30th, or if not finish, to accelerate it or just play until Liverpool are champions, hence why I put quickly on this Liverpool jersey. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think this is a probably a pertinent discussion for um, other leagues as well. The thir June 30th deadline is because the player contracts are expiring then. And what do you do uh, if your player contract expires and uh, despite FIFA saying, yeah, we allow you to extend, blah, 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 and maybe have even a third period. What if the player just doesn't want to? Uh, FIFA kind of had a hair say, well, then he cannot play for the team. They have to pay for him. So it's a whole lot of mess. And in order to avoid all these legal difficulties, uh, there are seemingly nine teams in the Premier League that say, okay, let's, if we play, let's make it shortened some way. Uh, nothing was specified. What does that does mean having a shortened season? Um, but get the season done by June 30th. 
Uh, now I'm gonna mention dates that are much later for other leaks. Um, I think in our leaks it will be a similar problem. So yeah, uh, just additional information that came up and that I want to add to this video now that we've talked uh, we're talking about the Premier League. Um, it's an interesting situation that will be in flux and uh, but it's for the first time that at least down here we'll play until whatever time it takes to finish this season which I never liked uh, coming from the Premier League. I, If you watch my first few videos I always said get the season somehow finished but you know try to do it by June 30th anyway and that's also where all my splitting up ideas or, or whatever find a way to get it done and get it done fast so let's see well back to the original video Italy wants to start training very very badly however I think the health minister uh, or the the advisor to the health ministers are really saying doesn't look good it doesn't look good they i think they are, they are on a similar stance as the last president uh we need the tests for more pertinent people than for Syria, and they have to find something so uh it might be hard and it's very hard to see Syria restarting although there is some hope that it might I wouldn't bet on it at the moment. Um, France is eyeing mid-July to finish the league, uh, but in a very, very tight fashion, and they wanna actually um, play every three, uh, no, mid-June, not July, that would be uh, absolutely nuts, mid-June to start and that they want to finish on a very tight schedule that by let's say the 2nd of August or 25th of July they could end with the league. Uh, they already moved the start of the next league towards the end of uh, August so uh, to accommodate that. Um, on the same note the Tour de France has not been cancelled for this year but they have also been moved now I think into August and September so remains to be seen. Um, in Spain, they also try end of May, beginning of June, maybe, but uh, there is a lot of scientists that are actually involved uh, to figure out what's necessary in a, uh, and so on. And they really want to have actually a very rigid testing on the players. How it's going to happen we remain, will remain in May, means to be seen. Now these are the top leagues. I hear that Scotland uh, is doing a Belgium in a way uh, with the caveat that yeah, there might be a, a relegated team that's not gonna fly. I cannot imagine, I can also not imagine that Rangers will uh, hand Celtic a title that they would have won anyway. But the rivalry is just too big so I cannot really see that. However, maybe it will happen because, I mean, it looks like a decided league. So I think if you ask me that all this, the, the Belgium model for many leagues could be an attractive uh, one, especially if the TV contract has been played, other than that you will kind of orient yourself on the big leagues with restrictions and so on. What is Germany doing? I think this will be the big testing ground uh, for all of Europe. Uh, can we emulate that model or do we need something stricter? And as, as we see, France, Italy and Spain are much more severely hit, but they, and probably England too, um, that they cannot do it the exact German way, but there needs to be uh, definitely a lot of, lot of testing. Now, the most interesting part for me was that UEFA said, okay, um, forget about any European uh, dates for now. We want to have the leagues finished. If the leagues finish by the beginning of August, then we could actually finish our tournament by probably choosing one location, having all the teams there, and over a, a course of two weeks, finish out the Champions League season, finish out the Europa League season. Uh, I find this a very interesting idea. Um, I 
think that since for the Europa League you would you still in the round of 16 you also around the round round 16 in the Champions League you still have four games to be played that actually maybe you need an you cannot do it in all one place you probably have to do it in another uh, you know kind of what the NCAA is doing in the basketball bracket to have uh, up until the uh, for the quarterfinals each quarterfinal has a host and then um, go to the next round so uh, that could be an option uh, in a way or you know to have two different cities hosting a uh, round of 16 and quarterfinal and then uh, one city the final city is hosting semi-final and final i think that is an option that i could definitely see happening and you save yourself um, the return legs in a way although they probably will have to be played in some way um, although i wouldn't mind if they say that let's say the round of 16 ties of the first round uh, they're all we cancel them and we play now one leg on a neutral ground so be it especially for the Europa, Europa League champ, Champions League I think you could make an argument although I think Bayern will not be happy for instance to say that the, uh, because they won 3-0 at Chelsea uh, or 3-1 well, whatever, whatever it was um, to cancel that one maybe there you have to have the return leg played decide however it goes uh, probably you have to play the return legs and then from quarterfinal you make it a one-legged affair I think that is a reasonable plan, however, traveling restrictions. Uh, if you want to have such a European tournament, depending on where it goes and you don't know how much the traveling res restrictions have loosened, I personally think there will not be much uh, vacationing abroad because it includes a two-week quarantine. And you don't know when a second wave is gonna hit. That's the other thing that I think many especially in sports world uh, over overlooking i am positively expecting that we will be hit at least with a second wave uh the latest in fall again so uh the leagues better be prepared and i think we have to that spectator sports that will take another year we need a vaccine for that to be honest so but that's my personal opinion uh, but knowing a teeny bit about the subject and having as immersed myself as much as, uh, as as I could, also being able to read the data and so on, I think this is the most reasonable way that's happening. What's not gonna happen are any internationals. I think the Nations League scrapped and that will be interesting how they will do it. I think UEFA will insist that uh, Nations League will be played what does this mean for the leagues next season? Um, will there be a tighter schedule? Um, uh, will the Champions League next season be played? Like you could play the group stage in just three games, you know, pick a host city for each group and play it there. Euro style, in a way. That remains to be seen, but I think we will, given that there's a Euro tournament, we have a Nations League that also decides a little bit on World Cup qualifying. Uh, at some point something's gotta give. The only positive that we have is that the World Cup is played in winter. That buys us actually some time. So those are my thoughts on how the leagues can restart. Other news, I think it's a little bit of a mood point to talk about that. Uh, there is of course the whole furloughing uh, disasters in England with Spurs and Liverpool. There is the civil war in Barcelona all those kind of things that probably would have deserved their own video, video a week ago but I the stuff in Barcelona I find interesting there's also civil war at Milan going on you know where suddenly we have this crisis so far the action on the field has taken away the tension in the boardroom now this is gone now the tension is flaring up and it hits Barcelona pretty bad I think it also hits Milan pretty bad at the moment uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on that would under under different circumstances warrant their own video but i think i want to see that a little bit and i'm having more fun doing some of the stuff that i've been doing with books with jerseys uh with i want to do tomorrow um the next round of uh what matches to watch and maybe i will really start some history videos because i think that's where my heart is at and just try once a week get you updated on what's happening anyway 
give me let me know what you think will happen and if you heard anything more than i did drop a comment below i would love to hear from you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.